Hey guys, welcome to the next episode of the Barnacle Inspiration series. In this episode, we're going to have a little bit of a nice chat about animals, beasts, or any kind of rahi, if that's what you want to call them. Rahi, of course, for those of you who don't know, are the names given to any sort of like animal, beast, or creature from the Barnacle universe. But that said, if you want to build any kind of animal or creature, it doesn't have to fit into the Bionicle universe, and you can, of course, just build you know, a panda, as well, we're about to see in the show, or you know, a dog, or something, anything. So we're going to cover some animal, creature, beast kind of themed things in this episode of the show. So without further ado, let's begin. And the first mock that we're going to be talking about today is Pandarahi by Zayantro. And by complete accident, this and a few other mocks, actually, are from the Bio Cup 2017 and 18, it seems. I have no idea when I'm going to post this episode, but if, if, because this will be in a long backlog, but if the Bio Cup is happening right now, be sure to check it out. And if not, be sure to have a look through some of the old photos of past Bio Cup, because there's heaps of great stuff there. You can easily check that out. And will I cover the Bio Cup again next year? I don't know. I'm very busy next year. We'll see what I can do. But that's enough of that. Let's talk about this panda. So something that's cool about this is for the specific round of the Bio Cup, this guy had to make a... He was fit into the sub-theme of making a real-life animal and not so much a Rahi, which he felt kind of limited him. So that, that in itself, I think, is kind of interesting, the idea of maybe you want to actually build a more make-believe creature that doesn't exist in the real world, or you make a cool creature that combines, like, a dragon and a mermaid, or, I don't know, combines two random animals from myth or legend or from the real world, and you kind of have more fun that way, or you put a cool twist on it or something. But here we see this mock, which is very much a stereotypical panda, but he has actually added some little details that make it a little bit more Rahi-like. And so I think there's a lot we can learn on two fronts with this mock. One, about just straight up building a recreation of... Uh, already pre-existing animal in our world, or taking an animal that already exists in our world and just adding some slight little differences to it and making it a Rahi or a more kind of fantasy, storytelling, make-believe fictional creature of some kind. So the first thing that I think is one of the really subtle but clever ways that he's managed to make this more than just a, a panda mock is taking a look at the eyes here. So he actually has four eyes, which kind of sort of blend into one, just the way it's designed, but you could obviously interpret him as having four eyes. And I think that's just a nice little subtle detail. It slightly changes the panda, but it also looks fairly realistic and traditional. But then we also see on the back here, he sort of has these pistons here, sort of towards the middle of his chest, belly area there. And it's just a subtle little detail, but it makes it look a lot more bionicle. You know, you take a look at actually quite a few of the bionicle characters that we saw in sets and things. A lot of their torsos had pistons on them. Pistons and gears were very much kind of the aesthetic that you saw with a lot of bionicle stuff. And so just those little subtle details here really expand this mock a lot and really do a lot for it. But really, other than that, this is essentially just a panda mock. You know, you take a look at the head here, which is very much the sort of center point of this mock, in my opinion. It really sort of sells the mock as a panda and really sells the mock as a whole. It's one of the more complex, beautifully shaped, nice areas of this mock. And yeah, it has a very panda vibe to it. And it's only those subtle little details that, that change it into looking more Rahi-like. I think that's really cool. Speaking of subtle details, we take a look at one of his legs here, and he has used a piece that I believe is from a Star Wars Ultra Build set. I've been trying to figure out which one it's from. I can't remember. I'm not sure, so hopefully someone will correct me in the comments. I thought it was the Scout Trooper, but I'm, I'm, that is not the case. Um, but Poe Dameron also has a similar one to that, which is an orange version of that piece with a sort of little strap across the side there. And so it's always interesting to look into printed pieces there and just see what they might do for the mock. You know, just this little subtle thing here, it could have literally been as simple as he ran out of black parts and just put that on anyway and hoped it worked. But I think it's interesting, you know, you take a look at uh, like a dog, for example, and, and sometimes the way that their fur is arranged, their specific colours make it look like, you know, they're wearing socks or something, just, just the way that the colours of their fur look, or they have little patches of, of different coloured fur somewhere on their body or on their person, and... I think this is just a nice little detail there, it kind of just makes it look like, you know, he's just got a little bit of white there, just that's naturally how his fur has been kind of laid out, and I just think that's a, a really subtle but very clever little detail and a nice use of that part. Speaking of nice use of parts, also really cool to just see all the general shaping throughout this using a lot of larger CCBS pieces as well as some old hockey pieces there from an old sort of construction hockey thing that we got way back in like 2000 and something. It's just, just a really useful piece and works really well there to create that overall shape. And yeah, just a fantastic looking mock. 
Let us move on to the next one, which is by Luna Still and is called Jumalong. So, obviously, this is a dragon mock, not something that exists in the real world unless you choose to believe so, because that's more fun that way. But nevertheless, this is a fantastic dragon mock, and uses a lot of CCBS, which is always really cool to see. It's always awesome to see how versatile the CCBS system is as a whole. I can only really kind of see maybe a couple pieces here that are more typically bionicle. You know, we take a look at the head here, and it uses a black Huna mask there to sort of form the shape of the mouth, which is a fantastic piece use there. I love seeing masks being used in really interesting ways like that. So seeing that mask being used upside down like that to sort of form that beautiful little sort of curve of the mouth there is awesome. It's really, really cool. But yeah, other than that, and maybe the slicer foot that's above it, and some other things I'm probably missing, this is pretty, pretty heavily CCBS. And, you know, I've, I've had a few people who've commented below in the video, and they've sort of said, like, I'd like to see more marks that have more CCBS, because I don't have any uh, pieces that are that are that are G1 Bionicle. I need, I need to see marks that are G2, because that's all I can use. And I think that's really interesting and really cool to see. Um, that, that, that's, you know, that's just the way that some people are building at the moment. There's nothing wrong with that at all. So it's just cool to see a mock like this, which is very beautifully shaped, very aesthetically beautiful to it. Very much looks like a dragon. It hits all and ticks all the boxes, uh, for what makes a dragon. And it has a really funky, cool color scheme too. Black, white, a little bit of gold, and then some beautiful trans green. And that's something else with a lot of CCBS. There was heaps of trans parts, especially in Bionicle G2, so uh, definitely nice to sort of use those in a mock like this, and also interesting, I don't know, I kind of wouldn't have thought about using trans pieces on a dragon, especially trans green, maybe trans red for fire or something, but it's just interesting seeing that, it kind of gives it this, this really interesting kind of magical look to it, and you know, dragons are a mythological kind of beast thing, and yeah, it's just interesting to see how that kind of gives it this nice sort of magical, glowing, mystical kind of vibe to it, which is, yeah, it's just interesting kind of playing around with the colours like that. I really like it. So yeah, definitely something to consider is to, to break out a bunch of your uh, CCBS pieces and kind of play around with sort of the frames that you can create with a lot of CCBS parts because, you know, you take a look at pretty much any CCBS set. You essentially build a frame and then add armor on top of that. And so maybe that's a decent starting point for building something awesome like this dragon here is to, yeah, kind of play around with doing some kind of frame, then adding your CCBS pieces and all sorts of other things around it there. And then maybe focusing on certain areas where you, you, you know, it's a little less of a frame, it's more sort of the pieces are all sort of linking together in some fashion to, to form a, a cool looking face or an interesting looking upper leg or something like that. But Nevertheless, this is a fantastically shaped and well-designed dragon, uh, and awesome to see CCBS used in such a versatile and fantastic way. So let's move on to the next mock, which is by Jekla, and this is a 2018 BioCup entry, and his theme was water. So, very, very clever and creative idea to make a seahorse for your water theme, because, of course, you know, animals that live in the water are very fitting. But even cooler to see such a beautifully shaped and well-designed seahorse like this. Using, again, a bunch of CCBS, but also a bunch of classical G1 Bionicle parts here in a very perfect, beautiful little blend like that. Some nice piece usages, too, using the Zamosphere launcher part there as sort of the little nose of the seahorse. I don't know the scientific name for that. I'm sure people will correct me. But uh, I think it's just beautiful shaping there and is very instantly recognizable. You can easily kind of get that seahorse vibe there. It's very cool. And then all these sort of Technic panel pieces here, you sort of see them on the neck there, kind of linking the head to the neck and to the body, the sort of triangle panel pieces there. You see those in a bunch of Technic sets, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, definitely take a look at some Technic sets because they do actually have some pretty awesome pieces that are pretty helpful with things that you're building. So uh, if you've never really bought or looked at much in terms of Technic, I know it's definitely one of the themes that I tend to not look at too much, but whenever I do and have a proper, proper look at some of the sets, I always think, ooh, you know, I could actually use that in a binocle quite nicely. So uh, have a think about that. You never know what possibilities might come out of that. Something else I like about this too is the really unique way that this mock holds itself up. We see that it is supporting itself on some seaweed that's been created out of these sort of random bionicle pieces here. And I know just literally looking from these, I have a drawer right here by the side of my desk, which you can probably hear me taking out now, and it is literally filled with those exact pieces that make up that, uh, that seaweed there in lime at the top there. And it's funny because... These pieces have sat here for ages, I've never used them, and I've kind of been like, well, I, I don't know if I ever will, I think I just, the way I build, I don't really, I don't, I don't really use those sorts of pieces. But, you see here, just sort of linking them together and forming a sort of general shape here, yeah, really effective, really beautiful looking, sort of seaweed design kind of thing there. 
So yeah, take a look at some stuff like that. Take a look at some of those bins that have a bunch of pieces in and you, you never use them. You never look at them and think, okay, well, what can I actually make out of these? You know, I've just seen this really clever looking seaweed design here. And you may say to me like, oh, well, Ben, I, I really I really don't want to build any seaweed. That sounds really boring. And you're right, like I don't want to build any seaweed. That does sound boring. But it sounds way cooler to make a seahorse or a fish or a, a whale, I don't know, some underwater creature or turtle and um, build some seaweed that then holds that up. That to me sounds way cooler and way more creative and way more fun. And so I'm more likely to use those pieces in that way. So just an interesting way of kind of looking at the pieces you have and the ways in which you can build with them. I like that a lot. And so no, no, that's a big inspiration for me. I really like that. And on top of that too, just kind of the fact that this is kind of a stand for the mock, that opens up a, a few other possibilities in, in, in my head brain. Kind of makes me think of, uh, you know, how do you want to actually display your mocks? You know, I've had a, I've been sorting through the submissions for BIS uh, so if you want to submit your own mocks, you of course can, but more about how to do that at the end of the episode. Um, and I was just sorting through some of them, and I saw an entry that had a really cool stand uh, with one of its, uh, with um, with the mock that they'd submitted. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And it kind of reminded me of like Figma or any kind of action figures or hot toys or something. And you get a stand kind of to hold it up. And the beautiful thing with that is you're able to really pose the figure that way. You can have the stand actually have them, you know, lift them off the ground and they can do some kicks and some really interesting poses that you wouldn't be able to achieve without that stand. So have a think about that. If you've built a mock and you really love posing your mocks and your mock itself is very posable, might be worth looking into just some interesting ways to build like a stand or something like that because yeah, then you can have some really cool poses. You can sit on your desk and look like a badass. It'd be really cool. And so here we see a cool example and a really interesting example of making a stand. You know, some people might want to build a trans clear stand so that, you know, it's, it doesn't detract too much from the mock or maybe build it in black because black's a very neutral color. Or like this, you build a stand that's actually very fitting with the mock and actually adds to it and sort of uh, kind of fitting for the background you might see them in, that sort of thing. Yeah, it's just, it's just really cool. So no one saw it coming. We got a bonus mock in this episode and this mock is by Mr. Cup of Fail. But this mock is a Mr. Cup of Win. I've, I think I've said that joke every time you've been on this episode. I apologize for nothing. Um, and his mock is called Moonsake Demonic Rahi. So I read the little description that comes with this, and I learned something cool. So he said that when he was first given this theme for the BioCup 2017, got another BioCup mock here, he wanted to do a Chimera. And instead, he wanted to, you know, kind of. Uh, see what else he could do. So he had a look, quick look through Google Images, and he said one of the first things that pops up when he Googled demonic ra or demonic creature was this image. And he was like, "Ooh, this is pretty cool. I might see what I can build." And then as a result, he built this. And again, I just think that's cool. You know, have a look through Google or mock pages, Flickr, anything, any website where you can search stuff up. Just Google something, and you know, maybe a picture will inspire you, like this has done so here. And so he has, in uh, in his own way, kind of recreated this picture and transferred it into Bionicle form, which is just awesome to see. But on top of that, he's further expanded uh, on that idea, and he's actually made this a transformer, well, to some degree. So the mock looks like this, like it very much does in the image, but then it has its other form, which is this sort of more kind of bestial form, which is why I put this in the episode, because it is more beast-like in this form. And I think that's just really cool. You know, the, the kind of general aesthetic this has using all those cool sort of printed lava CCBS shells and pieces here. It looks like this sort of evil demonic Rahi thing. Something you might see if you're walking around like, I don't know, some kind of scary volcano world or you're walking around the depths of hell or, you know, some crazy place like that. You would probably see some of these guys walking around and if it was a video game, you'd probably have to fight them and stuff. And I really just, that's just a fun aesthetic, but also the idea that they kind of change form and, you know, all the different parts of their bodies kind of have different uses depending on that form. I just think that's a really cool concept and really creative and really clever. Just awesome to see that. And also just a fantastic use of all these different printed parts and things like that. You know, we've got all these different CCBS shells that have different patterns and printings on them and things like that. And it's so difficult sometimes to use some of those pieces because sometimes, I don't know, the printing just makes it a little more harder to use or, you know, it doesn't quite work with the aesthetic that you're looking for. But maybe take a look at some of those printed parts and let those be a stimulus for your mock, you know. These cool printed lava pieces, you know, very much create that awesome look that he's aiming for. And, you know, maybe the weird funky printed part that comes on, I don't know, some random set that is not coming to my mind is a little bit more difficult, but I don't know, sort of sit with the part for a bit, have a think about it, and maybe you can, you know, 
kind of add one or two different things to it or do something with it in, that's uh, kind of more interesting and it can yeah, it can create a really interesting aesthetic like this mock has. And on top of that too, always always kind of play around and see, you know, this mock essentially just sort of folds in on itself. It's not too much of a complex transformation, but the transformation in itself does a lot. And, you know, he's got really interesting things like adding an arm on his back and the arm eventually kind of, you know, like becomes a tail or something. And there's all sorts of just really clever things that it doesn't necessarily take too much to factor that in you don't have to be like some kind of civil engineer and go okay so when i start the mark i'm gonna make sure to do this so this happens on me no you know it's just as simple as flipping things around and changing things up and suddenly it's got a cool transformation so that's always something to think about maybe you've built a mock already and it could be a transformer in disguise and you just got to flip a few pieces around and suddenly it can do something cool like this so there you go so that's it for four really cool beasts rahi animals all sorts of different things whether they're things from our world or things from made-up worlds or cool transforming lava beast guys, they're all pretty awesome. So hopefully some of those inspire you to build some of your own beasts and Rahi and things. And if they do, let me know. I'm always interested to see what you've made from watching the show. Speaking of the show, if you want to submit some of your own mocks to the show, you of course can. The only way to do so is through the email that you are currently seeing on your screen. I've had a few people who have messaged me links to their mocks on Flickr or different other places that have commented below and said stuff. I do not accept those. I apologize. The only reason I don't accept that is just so it's all in one place and it's easier and I don't forget about your submission because you you know you put it somewhere and I was like, oh, you know, I'm out, out at the shops or something. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll be sure to put that on the list when I get home and then I forget. So just to be fair and just so that everyone has the equal chance of being on the show... No can do, Neberinos. You've got to submit it through the email that you're seeing on your screen. There is no mock too simple or too complex. Feel free to submit it. And don't be ashamed to submit your own stuff too. It's not egotistical. It's awesome. Please submit away. More than happy to see it. All of the mocks that you've seen this episode were actually submissions. So there you go. They definitely will be on the show in time. And while you're there, uh, in the description below, which is where you'll find that email, uh, you can also check out some of my own social media. You can also see some of the mocks that you saw in this episode. Be sure to check out those links and give those guys some love. And be sure to check out my Patreon if you're interested. Very much would appreciate that. Otherwise, that's it. Hope you have a fantastic day. Hope you're inspired. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.